Uh, at 4 o'clock when we talk as a team, we're going to be very simple uh, in terms of just our approach to fall camp. Um, talk to him about two things. Number one, develop. Develop. We've got to develop as a team, develop as a side of the football, and then obviously develop as individuals. And Coach Royal used to always say when I was at Texas as a player and when he'd come visit, is a team is nothing more than a collection of individuals. So we've got to develop as individuals, develop our side of the ball, develop our team. And at some point, we'll turn our focus towards Rice later in fall camp. And the second one is be a great teammate. And there's a thousand things that go into that in terms of off-field behavior, on-field behavior, execution, dependability, respect, just be a great teammate. Uh, and that kind of goes back into our development as a team. So that's our message today. Um, very positive and excited to go. And um, looking forward to putting the ball down at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Major, in your first year as a, as a, as a coach and as a team, uh, some good moments, uh, but what's the next step? Where, where do you want to take this program in terms of what would be the natural progression or what would you like to see you know, happen this year? Just improvement. You know, I mean, obviously, you're, you're judged by your win-loss column, and that's ultimately what matters, but just improvement. And that's why the whole theme in terms of fall camp is development. You know, where are we at certain positions? Where are we on certain sides of the ball in special teams phases? Uh, where are we in terms of our team morale going into the beginning of the season? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not getting into the results. We're more process oriented, and uh, you know that's that's where our focus is right now. Like I said, it's about developing as a team, and at some point we'll turn our sights and we'll focus on our first opponent. But right now, it's about everybody getting back, being excited about playing, putting the ball down, and learning our defense better, learning our offense better, special teams, and, and things like that. Coach, when you look at the team, a snapshot view, where would you say offensively and defensively are your strengths, and then where would the areas that you would think going into camp would be your weaknesses? Well, the, the experience uh, up front on the offense and defensive line is, is probably if you just pinpointed where our strengths are. We've had a lot of guys play offensive line uh, that are on our roster, a lot of guys on the defensive side of the ball uh, that have played a lot in terms of our defensive line. So that's where our experience is. Uh, we've done some things in the offseason uh, to bring in fifth year seniors in the secondary wide receiver running back to help positions that are good already, but make those better positions and guys that can produce right off the bat. Uh, so those are two positions, defensive line and offensive line, where we're deep and we should be good. That doesn't mean we're going to be good. We've got we to gotta work and we've got to develop there. Um, but those are two of our strengths. And you know, quite honestly, I'd rather be strong up front than, than in the back end or at wide receiver and those things. So we've got great players on the outside, at tailback and wide receiver and DB. We just need to continue to develop that and develop the depth there. Coach, you spoke to some of the transfers that uh, that you brought in, uh, specifically like in the secondary, Deontay Anderson, Nick Watkins. Uh, can you just speak a little bit to your excitement level at bringing those guys in and what they might add to the secondary this season? Yeah, you know, whether it's a fifth-year guy or a freshman, you know, we, we expect people that are coming into this program, if you're good enough, you're old enough. So whether you're a freshman or a fifth-year guy, you can contribute. Uh, part of talking about that today at 4, four o'clock with the team is development is – you know, in terms of being a good teammate, is not focusing on depth chart. Let's develop ourselves as players, and then the depth chart will develop itself. Uh, so, you know, every there's some guys that are penciled in. You know, that there's a pecking order that you start fall camp with, but that doesn't mean that your job is secure. So, uh, we'll look at fifth year guys the same way we do at freshmen. Who can help us? Who can help us win? Coach, let's talk about your maturation going into your second year as the head coach. What are the one of the two things? that you have gleaned yourself as far as your growth to make you a better head coach now going into your second year? Well, just management. Uh, you know, you, you get more comfortable with the calendar, managing people, uh, managing different parts of your staff, uh, the trust factor. You know, it's, it's hard for your first year because you haven't been in battle with, with just certain people and, and certain systems. And after going through that for a year, people around you, you develop a comfort level, um, you develop a trust level. And so I think coming out of that first year, that's something that's, you know, that I pay close attention to in terms of where do you need to spend your time? How do you prioritize these things? There's a lot of things going on uh, within a program, whether it's your academics, uh, you know, you have young men that are dealing with family issues, personal issues, mental health. There's a lot of things going on. So how do you, you know, um, prioritize your time and prioritize your trust level in terms of people that are helping run your program? Coach, uh, how do you feel about where things are with Derek and now having he's had the opportunity to, to really be committed to this position? It is his spot. It is his offense. You've been able to work with him now for probably the longest stretch of time with him as your quarterback. How do you feel like things are at? Well, Derek, number one, I mean, just, just looking at quarterbacks in, in general, 
they've got to be tough and they've got to be great leaders and they've got to be competitive. And you have to have those three qualities. Who cares about how fast you are, how well you can throw the ball. If you're tough, you're a leader and you're competitive, people can get behind you. And you saw that when he came in the game at South Florida. So he's got the respect of our team. Uh, they know he's a tough competitor. They know he's a leader. Uh, so I just, I'm just looking forward to him building off of that. Quite honestly, I told Derek when we went to media day together, I said, you're in the same situation that Greg Ward was coming out of his sophomore year. You know, where he was named the starter towards the end of his sophomore year. He went on a little run. He had a little bit more playing time than you his sophomore year, but he went on a run. And the team went around him. They didn't, have, they didn't finish off the season the way they wanted, but they knew coming back, this guy's for real. And so you're in that same situation. You're poised for that. You've worked your butt off. Just go out there and have fun. You got a great coach. You got a great system. Uh, so I'm excited to just watch him continue to grow and develop. And uh, I've seen him all summer. I've just seen the look in his eye and the effort that he's given in all of his offseason workouts and what he's done with the wide receivers and bringing those guys together. And uh, that's that's the look of a starter. And so he has those three things that I talked about. And so now it's just continue to get with Coach Browse and, and continue to develop. Yeah, he's cleared and, you know, you could tell, you know, being out spring and, and graduating there at Baylor and then coming in in June, you could see, okay, we, we, we've got some work to do in terms of getting back physically. And then when I watched his last workout on Thursday, the 26th, and, and Ron, I walked over to Kendall and said, man, he looks great. And he's like, coach, he's, when he's, when he's in shape. So he, he looks great. And, and Coach Grace has done a phenomenal job with him in about six, seven weeks. Um, but just like Nick, just like Q Dormandy, just like all the guys, you know, you're going to get in there, you're going to get these reps, you got to make these reps count, and then we'll start moving the depth chart. Just worried about learning the system, executing your plays, and the depth chart will develop itself over time. Obviously, on our side of things, on the media side of things, Ed's getting an insane amount of recognition and notoriety over this offseason. And every time we've had a chance to talk to him or you, it seems like he's taking it very much in stride and that we got a season of football to play, and that's where his focus is. How do you think he's handled everything up until this point, and what are your expectations for him? Continue to be a great player. You know, be a great teammate. Um, those are things that we got to work on daily. And, you know, I tell the guys, be a great teammate. Let's be a great staff member, too. Those are things that we've got to focus on daily. Um, he's done well in terms of answering all the questions right. And that's, that's, the, that's the game of football. It's easy when you're in film rooms and things like that to have all the right answers and press conferences and all that. What happens when bullets start flying? And I, I use that you know, loosely. But what happens when you get into a game, a competitive situation? Then, then, then we find out what, you, you know, what you're made of. And so that's, that's when those questions are really important, and not at media day. And, but I thought he's, he's answered every question the right way. Uh, now it's time to go out and actually practice it and execute it. Coach, with the new red shirt rule kicking in this year, is there a plan that'll go into place when you guys head into the season? You know, if you get into a game where you're up a certain number of points, is there a package that goes in? Hey, these are the guys who want to get this play in time. Who will oversee that and kind of keep tabs on that as it as the season progresses to make sure everybody gets in what you want them to get in? Right. You know, we talked about that all summer again at our coaches retreat in terms of all of our freshmen with four games before they're declared. You know, a year of eligibility. So. You never want to put the cart before the horse. We're never going to go into the season ever as a staff, and it just makes you feel uneasy. Well, this game and that game, no, 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 no. We're going to try to get all of our freshmen in when we have the chance to do it, whatever game it is, when it happens, and then we've got to keep tabs after that game in terms of now in this time that he had, this guy's going to help us down the line. So let's kind of take the whole four games off of this guy. This guy's going to be somebody that helps us all the way down to the last game of the season. Um, and then there's other guys that you watch in, in that opening game and you say, you know what, maybe just three more dips in there and then pull them back out and redshirt them. But we'll all monitor that. That's something that we'll discuss every Sunday after we get done. We see the participation chart and who took snaps and where we are. And hey, we got two more free spins with this guy. Um, but it's, it's something that you've got to continue to monitor as you go throughout the season. Because every game is going to have its own story. It's going to write its own script. So it's, it's hard to just go in there and say they're going to play in this one, this one, this one, and this one. Major, from an offensive scheme uh, perspective, uh, you went through the entire spring and were able to install. Are you at a point now where is there still more to install, or is this now just kind of taking what you did in the spring and and 
you know, improving it, or is there still a lot to be done on that end? You know, went through it yesterday again um, with the offensive staff, and not a whole lot more. You know, they, they threw a bunch at them in the spring. Uh, there's a couple of things as you see the personnel, you know, okay, we've got this, so we want to, you know, and this was in our repertoire, we need to pull this out. This is something that we held back on in spring, but it fits our personnel. Uh, there's a few of those, but, you know, for the most part, about 80, 85% of what the kids did, and, you know, I hate to put numbers on it, but about 80, 85% of what they did in the spring is what they're going to be doing. Uh, there's a few little things because there's some situations you work on more in fall camp in terms of two-minute drill, taking the air out of the ball at the end of the game where there's some new things, new calls, different philosophies for different times of the game. But, no, I mean, uh, Coach Browse and Coach Clemens did a great job of throwing as much at them as possible. So when they're coming back into fall, it's not a bunch of new stuff. And, and tempo's, tempo is such a big part of that. Uh, I don't know if you put a number on that. Is there, a, is there a number of plays? I mean, you guys have generally been in that upper 70s, maybe low 80s in the past. Uh, is that something that you'll try to push again this year just with the new offense and Kendall coming in? To yeah, really we, we want as many plays as humanly possible, as many at-bats as, as humanly possible. I mean, you, you, the more opportunities to put the ball in explosive players' hands, the more opportunities to score points. And we want to be bold. Uh, we don't want to be emotional and foolish, but we want to be bold in what we're doing. We want to be aggressive in what we're doing, and we're going to do that. Um, and I'm, we've got the right people to do it. We've got the right coaches to do it. And that's that's going to be our philosophy on offense: is play fast, play physical, and have fun with it. Coach, can you talk about the evolution of the American Conference overall? Right. Initially, uh, I think when we first looked at the formation of the conference, we said, eh, "Not bad for outside the top five. But with the success of Central Florida, what you guys have done over the years, and and looking around at South Florida, this has become a very, very competitive conference. Can you just talk about the overall competition that you guys will face from conference competition? Yeah, it, it is the most competitive league, I feel like, from top to bottom. From top to bottom, because you've got great coaches throughout our league. I mean, you've got great coaches, and you see the turnaround that Willie Fritz had at, at Tulane. You've seen other coaches be able to come in and establish themselves, whether it be Central Florida and Scott Frost, uh, whether it be Coach Strong take on and, and improve with what Willie Taggart did. You've seen, a, and can Nia Matalolo doing what he does at Navy? There's great coaches across the board in this league. So week in and week out, you have to be prepared to play. And you've seen us in 15, you've seen Temple in 16, you've seen Central Florida in 17. South Florida was right there with them in the conference championship game. It's strong top to bottom. It's, it's different than, than leagues that I've been a part of in terms of every week you have to be ready to go, every single week. And you look at our record last year and in the losses that we had to league opponents, I mean, within touchdowns, you know, in the fourth quarter within touchdowns. So it's every game is close in our league for the most part. So it's a credit to the coaches, but it's also a credit to the players. You know, the, the players are what make the league. And we've got great players in our league, and I think people are finding that out. Unfortunately, they're finding it out on New Year's Day when they're seeing them. <laughs> but I think they're, they're figuring out that these guys can play. And there's some great coaches down there, and there's some kids that maybe some of these – uh, bigger schools, so to speak, have passed up on, but but they end up seeing them. They end up seeing them in a bowl game. Uh, Coach, I'm writing a story about faith in football. Um, does your team, does the Cougars pray for the games that uh, the normal thing say Lord's Prayer? Yeah, our, our guys, we always say the Lord's Prayer before we go out on the field. And then our guys, after they, they do it voluntarily after practice. So whenever we get through talking to the team and we break it down, they said the Lord's Prayer, and then they, they take off the field. And then after in the pregame, is that do you see them kind of go down to the prayer? They come up high, focused, uh, calm. How do they? How does it affect them? Yeah, you know, individually. You know, some guys are you know headphones and music guys. Some guys are spiritual pray guys. Whatever you need to do, and that's what we just talked to them. Whatever you need to do to get yourself prepared for the game, as long as it doesn't disrupt your teammate, do it. And so a lot of guys on our team raised that way, very spiritual. And you know, who am I to get in the way of that? Just some housekeeping stuff. Uh, Player-wise, you expect everybody to to report today, and mm -hmm. you know anything season type stuff coming in. You know by the position. Yeah, changes. we've been very healthy. Um, our guys have handled their jobs academically, uh, so all of our guys will be back. Um, we have one young man, uh, the hamstring that'll be hindered a little bit early in fall camp, um, but he was a newcomer who just came in as a freshman. But everybody, we've got a healthy group right now and uh, ready to go. You talk about the you talk about the conference being a great conference overall, and you have some great teams in this conference. But what team do you think for this coming season is the one that's going to give you a challenge? Yeah, I appreciate the question. I'm not being rude, but they're all 
they're all going to give you challenges. Every single team on our conference, you know, our conference schedule, non-conference schedule is going to be a challenge. And um, I just I, I feel uneasy as a coach getting into those kind of conversations as to who's the team to watch and all this. The team to watch is Rice. You know, you know, Seahawks, Seahawks, you know, bucket rice. That's what our focus is. So I can't get into that. I mean, we'll get into that as the season goes on and the hype begins. But right now it's develop as a team and then get the bucket. Major, uh, when you look at the, you look at the university right now, you look at the football program is that we've got a new basketball facility next door and the baseball team's doing great stuff, track and field. Just, can you just talk to me about the state of UH athletics and where you guys see yourselves falling into it this season in relation to how good things have been athletically the last couple of years? Well, I think success breeds success, you know, and it's, it just, I've seen it happen. I saw it happen when I was at Texas in 03, 04. As a GA, you see that, hey, some football things start happening, your baseball team starts winning, and all of a sudden the Durant shows up, and now you're in the Final Four. And it's just a winning atmosphere. It's winning habits. It's it's winning around the building. It's expecting to win. It's believing you can win. And uh, I've seen it. It's contagious. And so it's something that I welcome. You know, I love that. I love that whenever you go win on New Year's Day and you win a peach ball that some other people look around and say, hey, we need to win too. You know, I love that. That's a competitive nature. You don't shy away from that. You welcome it. Major, now that... Uh you you know you get dormity and and the and the off season and that would seem to give you that experience you need in in the quarterback room it will allow you you know in terms of Julon and um, Bryce and how you want to use them at receiver this year or is that still something that you'll very closely watch in camp to see what direction you go? Yeah, you know, Derek will t will take our reps you know with the starters. Um, Quentin Dormity will take our reps with the twos. Uh, Clayton Toon is a true freshman will come in. Uh, there'll be some days where he'll get some reps with uh, other groups, but he's with the threes. And then Bryson will have uh, a package at wide receiver and a package at quarterback. And then, like I said, through the developmental phase of fall camp and you see how people are playing into it, then you know, all right, we need to go full throttle with this guy at wide receiver. We need to go full throttle with this guy at running back or this guy at tight end, whatever it is. But that's, that's our starting point in terms of where the quarterback position is. Uh, Coach, there's a lot of news in the college football world right now about what's going on at Ohio State with uh, Urban Meyer. Do you have any thoughts on what's going on? No. I, honestly, I mean, to me, it's just about tend your own garden. Focus on your program, your players, your coaches. Uh, I don't know all the facts. I just know that I have players that I promised their moms and dads I'm going to do the very best I can with them. And my job is to make sure that I – create resources and time for the staff to do their jobs and we create an atmosphere that we understand that there are certain things that are not going to be tolerated we know that as coaches we see it every day um, but my focus is our garden that's that's where we focus on we don't get into all that earlier today earlier being uh, in the out of the media was mentioned uh, his success right now being part of uh, the of the media and he if he manages to win the heisman how um how big would it be for the University of Houston, recruiting-wise, to get like the four and five-star uh, players to come into Houston to actually consider Houston instead of going to the big power schools? I mean, it, it, for a lot of different reasons, you know, a Heisman going to a defensive lineman, a Heisman going to this conference, a Heisman for a guy who decided to stay home. I think there's a lot of causes that people win from, that you can get a Heisman as a defensive lineman. You can get a Heisman. You don't have to be at one of these conferences. I think those are all important things. But again, it's kind of like pick out the one team on your schedule that's a real big challenge. It's like, man, that's so far down the road. That's not even in my mindset. I'm just hoping that Will Noble doesn't snap the ball over Derek King's head on the first play tomorrow. So that's, that's where your, your mindset is.